There are other special methods that are part of C++ that are basically added to classes for you. With the default constructor, one thing that I didn't mention is the fact that there are times when you need a default constructor because objects are going to be instantiated and you don't have the ability to give them arguments. A uh, classic example of this would be when you create a vector of something or use other C++ containers. A lot of times it you will run into situations where they're going to need to construct a bunch of these objects without arguments in them. And so in order for that to work, you'll need a default constructor. The next kind of special method that I want to introduce, so we have the default constructor, is one called the copy constructor. So, okay, what happens right now when you take, so I have one a foo f, foo g, uh, though that's won't, well, okay. And I say that g is supposed to be constructed from a copy of f. This also, the copy constructor is also called if I have a function or a method that I pass an instance of this into. So when we call bar, for example, if I call bar with f, this winds up calling the copy constructor. So this invokes the copy constructor. In this case, it's fairly obvious. Uh, note that in C++11, you can use the curly braces, and indeed it is recommended that you use the curly braces. That's still passing an argument for the initializer there. Um, we can show that this compiles. This also does a copy constructor because it turns out that be, because I'm not passing a pointer to type foo or a reference to type foo, I'm actually passing this by value it makes a copy. So we have a local copy that we can play with and it doesn't alter the outside version. However, what does that copy constructor do? By default, the copy constructor takes and basically makes copies of each of these. For the int, copy is exactly what you want. For the int star, this makes another pointer that points to the same address. And a lot of times that's not what you want. For the string, it'll invoke the strings copy constructor, which does the right thing. So in some ways, if we provided our own copy constructor, okay, then A would be initialized to f dot A, B would be initialized to f dot B, and s would be initialized to f dot s. That's basically what the default copy constructor will do. And just to show this, print line, uh, not print line, c out made a copy. To demonstrate that this really is happening, when I run this, made a copy, made a copy, stuff. Uh, so the first made a copy gets printed because this line happens. The next made a copy is when this f gets copied into this foo object and then it prints out stuff. And so that demonstrates that this copy constructor is being called twice even though I'm only clearly invoking it here once. Passing things in uh, also does this. Most of the time, when you have pointers in a class, though, this is not the behavior you want. I don't want two different objects that point to the same chunk of memory. Instead, what I would need to do is make a copy of whatever is in B. So I might do that, and then you know, B equals new int 
Who knows? Okay. Maybe it's an int, maybe it's an int array. Maybe it's an int array of size A. I, I don't know. We didn't put enough meaning to, to this. Uh, but it makes a, and then I need to, would need to copy over the values. So star B equals uh, foo, no, foo dot B, and I'll need to star, we'll put some parentheses there just to make sure it's happy. Uh, foo was not declared in the scope because I didn't call it foo here, it's called F here. Note that your copy constructor needs to take a reference. Generally, it takes a const reference. When you're copying something, you're not supposed to mess with the original. If you tried to pass it in by value, then you have a problem that you're passing in by value, which calls the copy constructor, but it is the copy constructor that you're trying to invoke, and you would have a, uh, yeah, that doesn't work. So your copy constructor needs to take in a reference, and generally a const reference. Okay, so the copy constructor is our second special method that is provided by C++. As we saw, by default, it is just going to base, it's going to invoke whatever the copy is for each element. For primitives, that's just the value. For pointers, it means you're pointing to the same chunk of memory. For classes that have been written in other places, it will actually invoke their copy constructor. That's the default behavior. You can provide your own copy constructor, and in the situations where you have pointers, you generally want to do that so that you aren't creating aliases to a single shared chunk of memory.